Against my destiny. Say they shall come to nothing. Say those who wage war against the kingdom of God. They shall come to nothing. Say they shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against the gospel. The gospel of Christ. Say they shall come to nothing. Say they shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against my children say they shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against my marriage say they shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against my career say they shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against my healing say they shall come to nothing. Those who wait war against my deliverance say they shall come to nothing. Those who wait war against my vision say you will seek them but not find them. Say those who wait war against my glory they shall come to nothing. That the missile. Somebody needs to rock that missile. The Lord has spoken. It shall be so established. Amen. Lay your hand on your chest and just say after me, when I release this prayer for you, begin to rock the missile. It is going to happen. Amen. In the next few minutes, it is going to happen. Amen. They shall indeed come to nothing. Amen. Listen, I know who I am believing. I don't know about you. I know who I am believing, and it can never go wrong. With your hand on your chest, say you will seek them, but will not find them. Those who wait war against me shall come to nothing. Say I will seek them, but not find them. Those who wait war against my destiny, they shall come to nothing. If that prayer is your prayer, just lay that hand on your chest and say, they shall come to nothing. Say, they shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against my life, begin to pray, they shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against my life, they shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against my career, they shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against MFM Virginia, they shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against my destiny, they shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against my progress, they shall come to nothing. They shall come to nothing. They shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against my career, they shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against my children, they shall come to nothing. 
They shall come to nothing. They shall come to nothing. Those who wage war against my destiny, they shall come to nothing. They shall come to nothing. In Jesus' name we pray. We have some few prayers. I beg for your indulgence. I beg, gather yourself together. Deliverance is the agenda. There is a place you must come out of. And when you come out of there, the powers there will not follow you. Uh, listen, many of us will come out of a place. And the powers that we left, they will keep following us. Today, those powers you are coming out of, they shall not follow you. Amen. Say, for I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and tells you, do not fear. I will help you. Amen. Do not fear. I will help you. Amen. I don't care what the situation looks like. Do not fear. Amen. I don't care what truth arising up against you. Do not fear. Amen. I don't care what mountain stands before you. Do not fear. Amen. I don't care what your environment is saying. Do not fear. Amen. I don't care what those that hate you are doing. Do not fear. I will help you. It is in the context. It, it is in the, the context, context of, of that, that help. help. You will take these prayers. They are in series. Please, they, they are, are what in series. series. And, and this is the first one. one. Make, make sure, sure your mouth is closed. You will shout attacks that make it say, "I see. I do. I do not know God." Somebody, somebody get it? Make, make as, it as if I do what. They are asking you, where is your God? They are asking you. You go to that mountain of fire and go do die, 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 die every day. What has happened? They shall know. This prayer has paid them on the list. Prayer changes. When the prayer changes, we shall, in Jesus' name, I pray and go to the next one. Attacks that make it seem as if I do not know God. Blood of Jesus, let the attack backfire in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Attack that make it seem as if I do not know God. Attack that make it seem I said, I do not know God. Talk to the Lord. The attack that makes you look as if I do not know God. In Jesus' name we pray. Self battles in my life that make it seem as if I'm not serving God. Blood of Jesus, let the battles die. Shall we pray? Battles in my life that make it seem as if I'm not serving God. Blood of Jesus. Let the battles die. Battles in my life that make it seem as if I am not serving God. Battles in my life that make it seem as if I am not serving God. The battles in my life, in my marriage, in my career, that make it seem as if I am not serving God. In Jesus' name we pray. You will shout again. The spirit of faith. Make it seem as if there is not serving God. Every spirit of household wickedness that is making it look as if I'm not serving God. Die in the name of Jesus, shall we pray? The spirit of faith. Make it seem as if I am not serving God. Every spirit of household wickedness that is making it to look as if I am not serving God. The spirit of household wickedness.
In Jesus' name we pray. Do we pray again? Again, in the when Abimelech took the wife of Abraham, he looked as if Abraham was not of God. I trust that I'm making it to look as if I am not of God. That fire in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? When Abimelech took the wife of Abraham, he looked as if Abraham was not of God. I thought that I'm making it seem as if I am not of God. Backfire. When Abimelech took the wife of Abraham, it looked as if Abraham was not of God. It looked as if. It looked as if. I thought that I'm making it seem as if I am not of God. When Abimelech took the wife of Abraham. In Jesus', Jesus name we pray. pray. We, we shall shout again the wife, the attack of the wife of Potiphar. Made it seem as if God was not with Joseph. I tell you today, God is with you. Listen, if you are in this Thanksgiving and you are doubting, is God really with me? I tell you today, God is with you. I will show you the secrets and the mysteries of Thanksgiving. It may be some heavy weight lifting, but just listen. It's like you are taking vitamins. Though they may be of small quantity, but if you don't have them, things can be very bad. The efficiency of vitamins, they, are, they can be very critical. The same thing, the knowledge the Lord wants to give you this morning about Thanksgiving will make you live here a victor. Yeah. I want to say this way. I want to let you the attack of the wife of the Make it seem as if God was not with yourself. Attacks that are making it seem as if God is not with me. You are a liar. Die in the name of Jesus. The attack of the wife of God. Made it seem as if God was not with Joseph. I thought that I'm making it seem as if God is not with me. You are a liar. Die in the name of Jesus. The attack of the wife of Potiphar made it look as if God was not with Joseph. The attack that I'm making it look as if God is not with me. You are a liar. Die in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody was not getting me. You didn't tell me. I am on the road. You better follow me bumper to bumper. Don't lose sight of me. Not this morning. It is too critical. Shall we go? Shall we go? The attack of the wife of Potiphar made it seem as if God was not with Joseph. I thought that I'm making it seem as if God is not with me. The attack of the wife of Potiphar. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, I enjoin you. These prayers, the Holy Spirit crafted them to work specific deliverance, and they are breaking out. You will live here as a cocoon of breakthroughs. You will never live here the same way you came in. It is law. Listen, just this scripture I want you to read before you do the next very prayer. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Can we all read that? Let's go. That is just the part I want you to say. If I ask you now, are you wicked? Pastor, I'm not wicked. Pastor, I'm not wicked. The Bible says, 
All. He said what? All. So sin is wickedness. Every time you commit a sin, it's wickedness. It gives a great value for you. That is why you would do these prayers. If you have been making mistakes here, we're driving by this man. And somebody drops a washing machine in front of a trash bin. A, a private tra trash, trash bin. You took a washing machine from your house, came to somebody else's trash bin, a company, and dropped it in front, and you drove off. So if you think that person is thinking right, you got it coming. Man, not only is that person thinking right, what he just did, he's doing it in every other way. When, when that person is going to get a job, he will get the wrong job. When that person wants to go buy something, he will buy the wrong thing. When, when that person is looking for a wife or a husband, we get the wrong one. When, when that person is getting children, you get straight from the womb. When that person is looking for a career, you will go to the wrong one. Why? The brain has been hijacked. If the brain is not hijacked, why would you marry a washing machine? Even though it be defective. And you talk, it's not even the inside of the trash bin, in front of the trash bin, and you let, let somebody go, go carry that truck. Whoever is giving you a load that is not your load, they shall run to carry it. The person will think it doesn't matter. It's a company. It's their trash. But no, life don't work like that. We all are one. What you do, what you think you are doing for us, you are doing to yourself. What you think you are doing for us, you are doing it to yourself. We all are links. Nothing escapes. The, the brain has been hijacked. Lay your hand on your head and say very quickly, we get an evil thoughts that are not mine. Die with your own hand. In the name of Jesus, shall we pray? We, we get an evil thoughts that are not mine. Die with your own hand. In the name of Jesus, we get an evil thoughts that are not mine. Die with your own hand. Wicked and evil thoughts that are not mine, die with your own. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, that, that person, person, somebody told him to drop that in there. We can't do nothing except we are told. I've given you all the scriptures. There's nothing we do. We are told. Powers using my brain to think evil for me. Die in the name of Jesus, I will war. Powers using my brain. It is deliverance. Powers using my brain to think evil for me. Die in the name of Jesus. Power using my brain to think evil for me. Die in the name of Jesus. Power using my brain to think evil for me. Die in the name of Jesus. Power using my brain to think evil for me. Die in the name of Jesus. Power using my brain to think evil for me. In Jesus' name we pray. You will pray again. Evil spirit inside of me. Some of you know we have a resistance. I don't evil spirit inside of me. That's why I really don't. Click on deliverance ground. Follow the instruction. The ground on which you stand has become the ground of deliverance. Every spirit, in, evil spirit inside of me, I jack in my brain to make mistakes. Die with the mistakes in the name of Jesus, shall we pray? Evil spirit inside of me. I jack in my brain to make mistakes. Evil spirit inside of me. I jack in my brain to make mistakes. Evil spirit inside of me, I jack in my brain to make mistakes, die with the mistakes.
In Jesus' name we pray. Please don't be your aggression. You are coming to the end. See the powers inside of me. I'm jacking my trust to walk with the name. Die with the wickedness. I will pray. Powers inside of me. I jack in my trust to walk wickedness. Die with the wickedness. Powers inside of me. I jack in my thoughts to walk wickedness. Powers inside of me. I jack in my thoughts to walk wickedness. There you go. Look at that. In Jesus' name we pray. You will shout again. Powers inside of me. I jack in my mind to make mistake. Die, shall we pray? Powers inside of me. I jack in my mind to make mistakes. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers inside of me. Powers inside of me. I jack in my mind to make mistakes. Powers inside of me. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, the Lord says in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11, say, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Say, they are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. The one that originates thoughts of good and not of evil. Begin to inspire my thoughts in the name of Jesus. The one that originates the thoughts of good and not of evil. Begin to inspire my thoughts. Lay your hand on your chest and begin to pray. The one that originates the thoughts of good and not of evil. Begin to inspire my thoughts. The one that originates the thoughts of good and not of evil. Begin to inspire my thoughts. The one that originates the thoughts of good and not of evil. The one that originates the thoughts of good and not of evil. I know the thoughts that I have towards you. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you an expected end. The one that originates the thoughts of good and not of evil. Begin to inspire my thoughts. Begin to inspire my thoughts. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we have done it. Just ask you, ask us to do. Father, we have chosen this day to give thanks. Because you have a new thing to give us regarding the giving of thanks. Father, we gather at your feet to learn the mysteries of the kingdom. We know that these mysteries are not revealed to all. We thank you for considering us worthy to partake of the mysteries of thanksgiving. Father, do your work now. Your great and mighty works. Holy Spirit, you are the minister. You are the teacher. You are the minister of deliverance. Do your work. As you are asking me to say it, I say it. Every button reset agenda of this season. Take the sacrifice of Christ and begin to favor everyone under the sound of my voice. The button reset agenda that is ongoing. Take the sacrifice of Christ and begin to favor everyone under the sound of my voice. Lay your hand on your chest again. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Every ongoing button reset agenda. 
take the sacrifice of Christ and walk in my favor. You will decrease. See, every ongoing button reset agenda. Take the sacrifice of Christ and walk in my favor. In the favor of my marriage. In the favor of my children. In the favor of my career. Say, ongoing button reset agenda. Take the sacrifice of Christ and walk in my favor. Begin to pray. Every ongoing button reset agenda. Take the sacrifice of Christ and walk in my favor. Every ongoing button reset agenda. Take the sacrifice of Christ and walk in my favor. Walk in my favor. Every ongoing button reset agenda. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Please rest of it. It is a standing ministry. My, my apologies for a standing ministry. The Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries is a standing ministry. I will not be given another assignment. See, I will not be given another assignment. See, I will not be given another assignment. Amen. The power of thanksgiving. Giving thanks by sacrifice. Giving thanks by obedience. Please, if you are here with me right now, I must remind you, you did not make it by yourself. God brought you here. And there is a specific reason why God has brought you. One of those reasons is there is a new take I'm going to give you about thanksgiving. The giving of thanks is self-explanatory. We are all, if you give a child something, and the child will say, thank you. If the child doesn't say thank you, you will call the child back. What do you say? What do you say, honey? What do you say? Thank you. Yes. You are teaching the child to say thank you. One upon the time I was in college, and I was having some issues with my chest. And I went to the college clinic. And the doctor I met there was a lady. She treated me, and I left. After about almost two, three months, I came back there to the same clinic. And the doctor looked at me again, said, do you remember what I did for you the last time you came here? You're not even saying thank you. I was thinking, how would you even know me? There are thousands of students that you attend to. Why would you know that I didn't tell you thank you? So you think what I did for you was easy? So you don't even say thank you. I was so ashamed. I said, I'm sorry, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I'm trying to scratch my brain. I have forgotten. And when would you go back to a doctor and tell the doctor thank you again? A public doctor that attends to thousands of people. You will even be thinking she won't even recognize my face any longer. But that was my bad. Not to give thanks where I come from. They say it's like somebody has robbed you. When you are denied of thanksgiving, it's like you have been robbed. Nobody wants to be robbed. To be robbed makes you angry. To be, robbed, to be robbed make you feel you are not up to it. I'm going to take you to two scriptures. Leviticus chapter 7 and Romans chapter 1. Before we do those two scriptures, Not to say thank you is akin to robbery. After you have been helped, not to have a heart of gratitude. It's like somebody forcefully took what belongs to you. Why? Again, 
I don't know why I'm getting this story this morning. Many years ago, in a country called Italy, in a city called Naples, Napoli, we are on vacation, on college vacation, summer vacation. So we traveled to Europe. And one of my classmates went to the market in the city of Naples. And somebody offered him a camera, a very sophisticated camera. And the person gave it to him at a bottom rock price. And he thought it was a deal. He, he brought, he took the camera, put it for him, they packaged it, and they gave it to him. And he just carried it and was coming back. He came back, he, he gave, he said, open the bag. I opened. He said, take a look. It was all shining. It was all, I have made a good bargain today. Oh, wow, what a bargain. You can never make a bargain like that, you see? This is what I'm telling you. You need to walk around with me. If you have gone with me, you would have gotten the same bargain. I said, okay. I opened the box, and I saw stones. <laughs> but, but guess what now? <laughs> I, both of us, we are geology department students. Rock is our business. We study rocks. So I thought he was just playing with you. He wanted me to identify those rocks. So I took the rock. I took it. I said, hmm, this one looks like a nice. But you don't find nice in Italy. This is, okay, it is a metamorphic rock. You look at me again. They say, his body was shaking. Why? He was expecting a sophisticated camera to come out of the box. And what came out was a stone. How disappointed was he? Extremely One, you know students don't have money. <laughs> we came on this vacation because we had bus free. The government gave you bus free. It was the bus free <laughs> that we used to buy a ticket to come and scram money together to go on the summer vacation. So money wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't flowing. <laughs> so what, what will he do? The little money you would have spent to buy something good. You thought you made a bargain, and now you have lost. When we don't give thanks, it's like we have been robbed. My friend felt robbed. In fact, not that he felt robbed. He was robbed. There is something mysterious about thanksgiving, and I want to show it to you by means of sacrifice. If you don't know God by the sacrifices that God has commanded, and require, and wait for, then you really don't know God. I'm sorry to say. You know God at a level, but those who know what God requires in terms of the sacrifices, they know God at another level. See, we all know God at different levels. There are some of us, some things will shake you, but you just, I don't care what it looks like. I know I have prayed. Whatever happened, let it happen. If I perish, I perish. If you have a spirit of thanksgiving, it will give you that kind of attitude. Why am I saying that? There are five sacrifices of the tabernacle. One, the burnt offering. Two, they call it the meat offering. There's nothing meat about it. It's grain. Grain offering. It's the only one that doesn't have blood. Burnt offering. Grain offering. Peace offering, sin offering, and five, guilt or trespass offering. These five offerings, see the way I've counted it? I want everybody to be able to count it like that. If you do, it's like a vitamin. You don't know it's working, but it works. If you know God, but it's five sacrifices, five false sacrifices, you have an added knowledge that will make your battles to sink. I doff my heart for those who do mathematics. You know why? When they give you a problem in literature, that problem can be argued. If they tell you, read this book and write a summary, and you write the summary, they can tell you they don't like this. Well, no, no, no. This, this is what I summarize. This is my own summary. This is what I see, and this is my point, why I see them. 
You may see something different. That's fine. We have different height. You can argue with somebody. But when it comes to mathematics, and they tell you 2x squared for 2x squared, there's no argument. It's either you get it or you don't get it. If you don't get it, you flunk, you fail. We need mathematical precision when it comes to the things of God. If you know God by his five sacrifices, you know something great. You don't know how the vitamins work. You don't even know how the food works, but they work. Knowing God by these five sacrifices, they are very important. And that is why, as I show you these five sacrifices, it is because of the issue of thanksgiving that I'm showing them to you. Amen. Because of the issue of thanksgiving, that is why I'm showing them to you. Listen very carefully to the five sacrifices. They will be of great help to you. These five sacrifices that I just mentioned to you, if you know them, they will make your battles easy. Why? You will know God in a different way, in a different manner. These five sacrifices, the burnt offering, the meat offering, the sin offering, the peace offering, and the trespass offering. The, 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 the names may change, but it's the same thing. If you know God by these sacrifices, you know God above people who don't know it to another level. It will help you. Because if God said, bring me a burnt offering and a grain offering, and you don't know what it is, and you go and carry a, a, what will I say? You go, you go and carry what is not allowed. Only five kinds of animals can you use for this burnt offering. An oxen, a sheep, a lamb, a goat, a dove, turtle dove, and a pigeon. Those are the only five animals that you can use for these offerings. If God said, make me a burnt offering, and you go and carry a lion, say because, pastor, it took a long time to get a lion. Pastor, a lion is more expensive. It won't work. Or you bring a pig, it won't work. So it is important to know what God wants. These five sacrifices that I just mentioned, all I'm interested in, in there. In fact, I can quickly just show you what, what they mean and what they do. Because once you know that, it will become easy for you. It will become easy for you to know the trespass offering. It represents that Christ paid for our sin. That's why it's called a trespass. A trespass. Can somebody see my screen? Is it too tiny? Thank you. That means we have to go another route. Amen. There's another route. We shall go that route. Okay. Is it better? Okay. Just note these five sacrifices. I want you to know them very quickly. The first one I will talk about is the burnt offering. That is the most important of these five sacrifices. The burnt offering is an indication of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. It is total dedication, total commitment. Nothing left. You must burn that animal in totality. The animal must be totally consumed. They call it a holocaust. It is totally consumed. It's called burnt offering. It is to show your dedication. That's why when we often pray here, we teach you on this mountain that I tender the sacrifice of Christ as my burnt offering, to love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind. All. That is what that burnt offering means. All. You must give it all. Christ gave it all. So a burnt offering is an offering of trying to be at peace with one with God. It's a sacrifice of an atonement to be at one with God. It is to clear things, but it is not a sin offering. There is a sin offering. A sin offering is to pay for sin. It's not a sin offering. 
It's a sacrifice of atonement. It's a sacrifice to make you be able to, to show your dedication to God. But it's the most important. So God is requiring for us total dedication. Nothing from that animal is eating. It must be totally consumed. The burnt offering. The meat offering, nothing that is meat about it. It's just grains. It shows us as a living sacrifice. They are produce of the field that they use for meat. They call it grain offering. You can use cake, flour, something from the produce. Then the sin offering is for sin, just as the name suggests. The guilt offering is for some specific sins. When you commit some specific sins that you know those sins, it's like almost like a restitutionary sacrifice. You know that you committed this sin. You have taken what you're not supposed to take. Then it is like that. Amen. The one I'm going to is the peace offering. And why I'm going to this peace offering is because of what we are doing today. Giving thanks by sacrifice. Giving thanks by obedience. Giving thanks by sacrifice. Giving thanks by obedience. Peace offering is also a blood offering. Leviticus chapter 7. If you turn with me very quickly to Leviticus chapter 7. I read from verse 11. Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 7, verse 11. Please listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. You may be wondering, Pastor, what has it got to do with it? Is it not just for me to say thank you? What we all know about Thanksgiving is just the expression, I thank you. I thank you. But there are people who are thanking you, but they are not really thanking you. There are people who are thanking you, but their heart is not thanking you. But there are people who are thanking you, it's like they are cursing you. So, thanking you, I thank you, is more than what we speak by mouth. It is an attitude of the heart. It is from your heart that gratitude comes from. Listen, to Leviticus chapter 7. For those who are familiar with the book of Leviticus, when you open Leviticus, the first thing you see in chapter 1 is the burnt offering. Chapter 2, the grain offering. Chapter 3, the priest offering. And go up like that. But when it comes to chapter 7, something happens. It says, verse 11, this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offering. So burnt offering as a law, the law of the sacrifice of burnt offering. The law of the sacrifice of grain offering. So every sacrifice is by law. Tell somebody. Say it again like you mean it. Every sacrifice is by law. That is a great and deep knowledge. That is, there is a law that stipulates this sacrifice. This is the law of the sacrifice of peace offering, which you shall offer to the Lord. Now, now change it. Say, if he offers it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving on leaven cakes mixed with oil. One. On leaven wafers anointed with oil. Or cakes of blended flour mixed with oil. Thirteen. Beside the cakes, as his offering, he shall offer leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offering. It's like it's a second thought. It's like this was not the plan of peace offering. You know we pray. I tender the sacrifice of Christ as my peace offering. Let the peace of God overshadow me. That sacrifice that we call peace offering, you will take the animal and follow the stipulations and roast it. But it is the only sacrifice that the person who is offering it can eat of. You can eat. The priest can eat. So, you're giving it to God. The priest can eat. You can eat. Burnt offering, you dare not touch it. Nobody can eat burnt offering. If you eat it, it will poison you. It will kill you. But peace offering, you can eat. The priest can eat. 
The fact that you that is offering it can eat after you place your hand on that animal. I transfer my sins. You are now eating it. In the peace offering is the only one among all the blood sacrifices that you can eat. I want to use that to show you why it is the one that is used also. When you want to do a thanksgiving, you use a peace offering and you will not add this special grain offering to it. What is that saying? It means that peace offering is a requirement for thanksgiving. That is, if you want peace, give thanks. Tell somebody. Say it again to somebody. You see, it is mysterious. How can my giving thanks have anything to do with? How can my giving of thanks have anything to do with peace of God? That is where we get it from. Because a thanksgiving offering is a peace offering. God is showing us in pictures that thanksgiving and peace, they go together. Tell somebody. Say it one more time. If there is war, <laughs> nobody will be giving thanks. You'll be killing. But when there is peace, you can give thanks. In fact, war can swallow thanksgiving. But when there is peace, so it means that thanksgiving is something that has peace at its basis. Not only that it does it have peace at its basis, this peace is achieved by the power of the blood of the sacrifice of Christ. Because that is what that peace offering is. It's suggesting that blood is shed to make peace with God so that you can thank God. And look at all the requirements that you just read. It means not one thing, but many things go into thanksgiving. The peace offering normally don't have all this that listed, all those cakes. It doesn't have it. But when you want to do thanksgiving, you will do the peace offering, and you will not do these other things, this cake, all this flour, showing you what? Showing you that when you come to give thanks, you need more than one element. It's not just I say, I thank you. No. To give thanks, and the thanks is valid, you need more than one element. You need more than just the peace offering. You need all these things that is added to the peace offering. The, the unleavened cake. And guess what? The third thing is leavened bread. How many of you have watched the Jews doing the feast of unleavened bread? When they want to do the feast of unleavened bread, the Jews, remember the feast of unleavened bread, it is attached to the feast of Passover. They will clean their house so much that they don't want to find any dent of yeast in the house. If you have eaten puff puff in the last week, when you come to this period, you must go and look for all that you have used to make that puff puff because it is yeast. They must take yeast out of here. Why? You see the word puff puff. Somebody may not understand, but those who are from where I came from, they know puff puff. Why it is puffing is the yeast that is making it to puff. So normally, in the things of God, you don't want yeast. They do unleavened, unleavened, unleavened. Why did it come to the issue of thanksgiving? And you now have to use leavened. It is a mystery that we are using leavened bread when it comes to the thanksgiving offering. It is a mystery. God always above leaven because leaven means pride. Leaven means sin. Leaven means all that is bad. And God is asking you to add it to the offering for thanksgiving. To add it to the peace offering, to make the offering of thanksgiving. Why would God allow you to put leaven? Can somebody listen to me here now? It means <laughs> I'm trying to buy a house and I did not succeed to buy the house. I will thank God that I did not succeed to buy the house. Can somebody hear me? I'm trying to get a breakthrough. I did not get the breakthrough. I will tell God, Lord, I thank you for that breakthrough I did not get. I'm trying to go somewhere and I get disappointed. I will thank God. I will tell God, thank you for this disappointment. Can somebody follow me? You are trying to do something, but it's not working. But you will tell God, thank you. The attitude of thanksgiving is irrespective of your condition. Tell somebody. It doesn't matter what you are going through. You see, 
Why would they put leaven? Leaven that means sin. That means pride. That means to puff. Why would they put it in the offering of thanksgiving? It's to show you that when it comes to thanksgiving, you must give thanks for all things. Romans 8.28, it says all things work together for good. For them that love God. What are all things? The good. What are all things? The bad. What are all things? The ugly. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Somebody doesn't like that statement. Pastor, why would I give thanks if I'm crying? Pastor, what, what kind of story is that? That is the mystery of thanksgiving. The mystery of thanksgiving is that when things are not good, give thanks. Tell somebody. And let me ask you, how easy is that? When, when things are not good, the first thing we do, we will squeeze our face. Our temperature will rise. We, we can't do, some of us can't. <laughs> you want me to say thank you in that condition? This is one of the mysteries that is going to change somebody's story here today. That when you fail, thank God. When things are not going well, thank God. When you are being pulled backwards, thank God. When we are going through battles, thank God. It means thanking God is a constant affair, irrespective of your situation. And that is why you have that sacrifice like that. Very shortly, I will go to the next one, something about that sacrifice. This sacrifice, they also call it a heave sacrifice. That is, you will take part of that meat and raise it up to God. Your hands are stretched up. They call it a heave. H-E-A-V-E sacrifice. What does that mean? It means that when you are lifting up to God, God is going to hear you. Can I have my mic, sir? When you are lifting up your hands, it's showing that many of us, when we are praying, our prayer doesn't go above the ceiling. Because why? The prayer is not carried on thanksgiving. We are so much carried by what is affecting us that we fail to give thanks. But it is when you are giving thanks and it is a heave offering. A heave offering means what? means your hands are raised to God. It means your hands are raised to what? Raised to God. If your hands are raised to God, it means you are giving thanks. The raising up of hands in thanksgiving offering is opening the heavens over your head. Amen. The heavens over your heads are open. That is why part of thanksgiving offering is what you are offering, you will lift them up. This is I'm telling you about all these aspects of thanksgiving. I don't want somebody to get lost. The last one I'm going to tell you, and this is why I want everybody to open their eyes and look at what I'm going to show you. Because this is very important. Many of us, these mysteries of thanksgiving that I'm telling you, somebody will live here today and will be ready to thank God at all times. Amen. Somebody's going to live here today. And as you pull out, somebody will pull in front of you. Bah! Normally, you will curse. What? But this time you say, oh Lord, I thank you. The moment you say, oh Lord, I thank you, angels will be released. The next battle is in trouble. Do you see how things work for us? Instead of you to begin to pine and to whine, you give thanks. The more you give that thanks under that condition, there will be a release of angels. That is the power of sacrifice. Listen, I want somebody now to get this last one before I take you into this confession on thanksgiving and the prayer on thanksgiving. Because I'm very sure that the Lord brought somebody here today, partly also because of what I'm about to show you about thanksgiving. When you are giving thanks, in the book, I think in the book of Colossians, in the book of Colossians, let me put it up so that somebody can hear what I'm going to say here. It is so very important. Colossians 3.15, it says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And at the end, it says, and be ye thankful. Let the peace of God rule in your heart and be ye thankful. Many of us have been robbed of peace 
the reason why we are robbed of peace is because there is no thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is like a catalyst to have peace. You know, for those who study science, a catalyst does not participate in a, in a reaction. A catalyst is just to make things work. There are those who are not going anywhere, but they will point you to the right way. That is what the catalyst does. Even though they are not going anywhere, they will tell you which route to take. The same thing, Thanksgiving will make peace to be available, and it will point where you are going to you. Why is it that only... Why is it that you can eat of it, the priest can eat of it, the one who is offering can eat of it, why? Why? Why does it allow us to eat? This eating that everybody can do, and you cannot do by other sacrifices, is showing you the power of fellowship. It means if you want fellowship, give thanks. Tell somebody. Say it to another person. What is fellowship? Fellowship, this is a fellowship. What is fellowship? Fellowship is community. What is fellowship? Fellowship is having people together. Listen, we need people together. <laughs> a little boy was doing birthday, and nobody came to his birthday. The little boy felt very bad. In fact, the policeman that was on the call happened to stumble into it, and the policeman himself felt very bad. And the reason why they did not come to this boy, this little boy birthday, was an issue of is it racism or, or discrimination. So the policemen went and brought other policemen, and they came in large number to do the birthday of this boy. That boy that day knew the power of fellowship, the power of the community. We are born in the community. We grow in the community. We prosper in the community. We do everything in the community. We die in the community. Without the community, you can't do all these things. This is the power, the power of conformity is so important in community. In the Japanese community, they hate to fall off. Because if you fall off, you can be cast out. Nobody wants to be rejected. The reason why we hate rejection is because by rejection, you are losing the comfort of the community. Rejection is actually loss of community. But the community is not accepting you. The community of men. In Leviticus chapter 22, I want to show you the last one. Something about this sacrifice, this Thanksgiving sacrifice. Let everybody listen to me now. The meat of this sacrifice must be eaten same day. You can't bring it to tomorrow. Normally, in most sacrifices, when you, eat, when you cook the meat, you must Eat it that day. Leviticus chapter 22, verse 29. Leviticus 22, verse 29. I think I need to show somebody that very quickly. Leviticus chapter 22, verse 29. Leviticus 22, verse 29. It says, When you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, follow the rules. So that it will be, so that you will be accepted. Follow what the rules. It says, eat, eat the same day, and leave none of it until the next morning. The Lord said, "Obey my commands." Normally, the peace offering is a offering that they can allow them to eat a day after. But when it becomes Thanksgiving offering, no, you must eat it that day. Why? It means. The thanksgiving of yesterday are not to work for today. You must do your thanks day by day. I gave thanks yesterday does not mean that today you will disregard thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a constant. It's a factor that you cannot compromise, you cannot negotiate. I hope I'm talking to somebody that we use this thanksgiving by means of these sacrifices. And you will now begin to take it as an issue of law and beauty. Thanksgiving must be taken as an issue of law and beauty. That is, you are bound to do it. If you begin to see it like that, 
your deliverance will be quick and rapid. But if you think it's what I can just do when I like, and when I don't do it, you will suffer. Many of us are suffering because we think we can do it when I like. If I don't like your face and you do something for me, I can go ahead and I don't say thank you. Or don't have a heart of gratitude. You lose big time. Thanksgiving must be done daily. Amen. Amen. Now, finally. Romans chapter 1. This is our last scripture. Before I do Romans chapter 1, I want everybody to do this with me. It is important that you get some scriptures of thanksgiving into your soul. It is food for your soul. And I want everybody, I will call the scripture. There are about seven of them. And you will say this, you will say, you will say it out while I call it. Shall we arise? The first scripture is in the book of Psalms. In the book of Psalms, you will find the first scripture. Let me do it what everybody can see. Amen. The first scripture, I will call the scripture and you will read it out. Psalm 50 verse 14. First Corinthians 1 4. Corinthians 9 11. Amen. Can we do that again? Second Corinthians 9 11. You see that scripture will result, will become consequential. First Timothy chapter 4, verses 4 to 5. Let's go. Please, one more time. It's, it's getting slow. It is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. And the next one, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. In all circumstances, all. That is why you have all these arrangements in the Thanksgiving offering. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7. Let's go. somebody who has been spoken to. The Holy Spirit is telling you the amendment you need to make. That your thanksgiving must now become by attitude of your heart. Not by the words of your mouth. You have been banking on the words of mouth to express thanksgiving. As from today, it will become an attitude of your heart. Yeah. Say, my father, 
say, my father, my father transfer, the power of thanksgiving transfer the power of thanksgiving into my heart. Into my heart. Shall we pray? My My father, transfer the power of thanksgiving to my heart. My father, transfer the power of thanksgiving into my heart. My father, transfer the power of thanksgiving into my heart. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Now rest of it for the final lap. Listen very carefully. This is the book of Romans chapter 1. And this is verse 8. I want everybody to please open your eyes. This final part of this deliverance message. It is indeed the deliverance message. Because this is what will work your deliverance. Look at how Apostle Paul started in verse 8. He said, first, I thank my God. Meaning, thanksgiving is of the first realm. Whenever you want to do anything with God, that is why he says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. The first thing first is thanksgiving. Never approach God. Even if you are crying, under crying condition, as you approach God, begin with thanksgiving. Say, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you. Thanksgiving is a thing of the first line. Now, I want to take it very quickly to verse 21. That is where we are going. Verse 21. It says, They know God, but they do not give him the honor that belongs to him. Nor do they thank him. They know God, but they do not give him the honor that belongs to him. Nor do they thank him. Look at what God is going to do. Instead, their thoughts have become complete nonsense. And their empty minds are filled with darkness. They say they are wise, but they are fools. Instead of worshipping the immortal God, they worship images made to look like mortals or birds or animals or reptiles. What has this got to do with thanksgiving? And so, if you want to get that scripture very well, if you read King James Version, listen to how in just put it. Because also they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile. They became futile in their thoughts because of lack of thanksgiving. They are foolish as we are darkened. They are foolish as we are darkened because of lack of thanksgiving. What is it to God that it will bring this condition unto man that failed to give thanks? That is the story of many of us. And why it is this story, listen to me carefully now. Isaiah 14, 14. We have a supervisor, a prince of this world, that wants to be like God. If God hates ingratitude, the devil hates ingratitude. Tell somebody, say the devil hates ingratitude. If God hates ingratitude, the devil hates ingratitude too. Because why? The devil wants to be like God in everything. So if God hates ingratitude so much, the devil, even though the devil himself is an epitome of ingratitude, even though he is the one that should be giving gratitude but not failing to give it, but he himself hates it. We all came from somewhere. This is where I want to pin down the issue. We all came from where? From the prince of this world. The battles that come to deliverance ground, you will be surprised. Most of these battles, they are battles of Giving of thanks, we fail to give to the devil. Many of us, we may be a first generation Christian. If you're a first generation Christian, what is in your background? It's idolatry. That idolatry, in that idolatry, if you don't give thanks in idolatry, they deal with you very badly. Some of us don't get that. That because you fail to give, you fail to give thanks by rituals, by rituals of obedience, by rituals that your blood has agreed to, we are in battles. The ritual you fail to give to the devil, that ritual 
will not begin to pursue you. Many are being pursued today because of what their blood is expected to do, but it's not doing. If your blood is expected to be given thanks by a festival, by a feast, by a ceremony, and you are not doing those ceremonies, it's like you are not giving thanks. So, thanksgiving by obedience, thanksgiving by sacrifice, you saw it, peace offering, thanksgiving by obedience, if there is a ritual you are supposed to do, and you don't do that ritual, at least you are not obeying, the devil hates it. If you promise the devil, the sister that promised the devil, every year I will bring something and throw into this river, and you stop doing it, the devil will take it as a violated covenant. You only violate covenant because you don't have gratitude. You only violate a covenant because you are not thankful for it. You, we only disobey God because we are not grateful to God. If you are grateful to me, you will obey me. Tell somebody. <laughs> Say it again. That is why the battles that bring many to deliverance ground is the battles of the blood that has failed to obey the devil. I repeat. The battle that bring many of us to deliverance ground is the battle of the blood that fail to acknowledge the devil. Now you have come to Jesus and Jesus should take the upper case. But you are not transferring the case to Jesus. You, you need to transfer the case to Jesus. If you leave the case the way it is in your blood, it should just be there and be troubling you. Whatever is troubling you by blood today, it shall be terminated. Say, so whatever is troubling me by my blood, be terminated. Touch your belly button. Say, whatever is troubling me by my blood, be terminated in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Whatever is... Don't stop. Whatever is troubling me by my blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Say the failure of my blood that has become my failure. Die in the name of Jesus shall we pray. Shout. The failure of my blood that has become my failure. In Jesus' name we pray. Say the battles of my bloodline that have become my battles. Die in the name of Jesus. Touch your belly button. The battles of my bloodline that have become my battles. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we rise? There is somebody that is the prayer you came here to say. Please, if you are that person, please open your mouth now. If you are that person, please open your mouth. Say, the battles of my bloodline that have become my battles to disgrace me. Say, blood of Jesus, let the battles die. Shall we pray? The battles of my blood that have become my battles to disgrace me. Blood of Jesus, let the battles die. The battles of my blood that have become my battles to disgrace me. Blood of Jesus, let, my, let the battles die. The battles of my bloodline that have become my battles to disgrace me. Blood of Jesus, let the battles die. The battles of my bloodline that have become my battles 
to disgrace me. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, the battles I cannot come out of because of the thanks my parents failed to give. Can you say that? <laughs> say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. Let the battles die. Shall we pray? The battles that cannot come out first. Because of the time my parents failed to give. The battles I cannot come out of. Because of the thanks my parents failed to give. The battles I cannot come out of. The battles I cannot come out of. Because of the thanks my parents failed to give. Because of the thanks my ancestors failed to give. In Jesus' name we pray. You will shame that parent to ancestors. And say that prayer again. Say the battles I cannot come out of because of the thanks my ancestors failed to give. Let the battles die. Shall we pray? The battles I cannot come out of because of the thanks my ancestors failed to give. Let the battles die. The battles I cannot come out of because of the thanks my ancestors failed to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let that hands be on your side. Say, the battles of a darkened mind. Because I did not give thanks. Die in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? The battles of a darkened mind. Because I did not give thanks. Die in the name of Jesus. The battles of a darkened mind. Because I did not give thanks. Die in the name of Jesus. The battles of a darkened mind. The battles of a darkened mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, read verse 24 together. One, two, let's go. Can somebody see the link between lack of thanksgiving and that statement? That statement has its root in verse 21. That because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish as were darkened. This is a continuation of that verse 21. And if you read down to the end of this chapter, you will see the package of lack of of thanksgiving. It's a bad package. When you get home, read the remainder of Romans chapter 1. Everything you are reading in there is, is because of the failure to give thanks. I pray for you. Every battle of the failure to give thanks in your life, let the battle terminate today. Yeah. Say battles of the failure to give thanks in my life. Die in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray battles of the failure to give thanks? The battles of the failure to give thanks in my life. Die in the name of Jesus. The battles of the failure to give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Say the attacks because of the failure to give thanks. Die in the name of Jesus. I will pray. 
the attacks because of the failure to give thanks. Die in the name of Jesus. 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 The attacks. The attacks because of the failure to give thanks. Die in the name of Jesus. The attacks because of the failure to give thanks. Die in the name of Jesus. The attacks. The attacks. Because of the failure to give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Please take your offering. Take your offering. It is a token of your sacrifice. Call it your offering of thanksgiving. Call it your offering of thanksgiving. Your tithe and your offering. The poverty, the lack, the insufficiency in every life because of the failure to to give thanks. I use the blood of Jesus to bring it to an end. The lack, the poverty, the insufficiency in every life because of the failure to give thanks come to an end. With that offering in your hand, you will speak the lack, the poverty, the insufficiency because of the failure to give thanks. Come to an end in the name of Jesus. The lack. The poverty. Say the lack. The poverty. The financial insufficiency. The cause of the failure to give thanks. Come to an end in the name of Jesus. Say the lack. The poverty. The financial insufficiency. Because of the failure to give thanks. Come to an end in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray on your offering. The lack, the poverty, the financial insufficiency. Because of the failure to give thanks. Come to an end. Come to an end. The lack, the poverty, the financial insufficiency. Because of the failure to give thanks. Come to an end. The lack, the poverty, the financial insufficiency. Because of the failure to give thanks, come to an end. The lack, the poverty, the financial insufficiency. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, Father, I pray for the offerings of your children and for their tithes. Father, let it sink in with their soul today that the spirit of thanksgiving has been bestowed upon them. In all situations and in every circumstance, they shall give thanks. The power to give thanks no matter what fall and rest upon you now. Say the power to give thanks no matter what. Fall and rest upon me now, shall we pray? The power to give thanks no matter what. Fall and rest upon me now. The power to give thanks no matter what. Fall and rest upon me now. The power to give thanks no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. Accept the offering of your children. Let it be unto you as the sacrifice of Christ. Father, accept it today as a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Let their heavens open. Let the head on which they stand answer unto them. Let the head they breathe answer unto them. Let the water answer unto them. 
Let everything that God has created answer unto everyone here now. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, you will say this prayer to close. If there is a law of sacrifice of peace offering, then let the law of the sacrifice that still, that kill and destroy peace in my life break and die. If there is a law of sacrifice of peace offering, there is also a law of war. There is a law that does the contrary. That two prayers to close. You will say, if there is a law of sacrifice of peace offering, then let the law of the sacrifice that still kill and destroy peace in my life break and die in the name of Jesus. Shall somebody pray? If there is a law of sacrifice of peace offering, then let the law of the sacrifice that still kill and destroy peace in my life break and die. The law of the sacrifice that still kill and destroy peace break and die. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, O oh Lord, you gave the law of the sacrifice of peace offering. Let every law of the sacrifice not for peace offering affecting me break and die in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? O oh Lord, you gave the law of the sacrifice of peace offering. Let every law of the sacrifice not for peace offering affecting me break and die. The sacrifice not for peace offering affecting me break and die. The law of the sacrifice not for peace offering. In Jesus name we pray. And this the battles of the home that is not a home. Blood of Jesus Kill me of the battles in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Not every house is a home. When a child goes out and shoots another person, it's not from a home. When a child goes out and shoots another person, for whatever reason, that child did not come from a home. It's from a broken home. That home has not been home to that child. An unparented child is not coming from a home. There is the battle of a home that is not a home. It has affected all of us at one point or the other. To close, I want you to shout that prayer. Battles of the home that is not a home. Blood of Jesus, kill me of the battles. In the name of Jesus, shall we pray? Battles of the home that is not a home. Blood of Jesus, kill me of the battles. Kill me of the battles. The battles of the home that is not a home. Lord of Jesus, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me. The battles of the home that is not a home. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord said we are saying the prayer for three times. And the second category of people, if you are here, you are from a polygamous home, please, this is your time to say that prayer. If you are from a polygamous home, that prayer, you will shout it now. The reason being that you can have millions of dollars in a polygamous home. A polygamous home is not a home. It is a home with battles. Many of us from polygamous home we carry the battles of a home that is not a home. And those battles are wasting us. Because you stand before your maker. Every battle of a home that is not a home. Today, in this instant, as you take this prayer now, you shall be cured of it. You shall be cured of it. The blood shall cure you. The blood of Jesus shall cure you. Say battles of the home that is not a home. Blood of Jesus, cure me of the battles. Shall we pray the battles of a home that is not a home? Blood of Jesus, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me. The 
Battles of the home that is not a home. What does Jesus kill me? In Jesus' name we pray. Now everybody to say it for the third time. Touch your belly button. Father, as they are doing it now, let this battles that has followed many up to this point, that is not allowing their home of today to be established. Let the battle die. Amen. The battles of the home that is not a home, that is not allowing anyone yet to establish a home. Father, I use the blood to surmount it. Amen. The battles of a home that is not a home, that is not allowing some individuals to create a home today. Let the battles die. Amen. You will shout, say, battles of the home that is not the home. Blood of Jesus, kill me of the battles in the name of Jesus. The battles of the home that is not a home. Blood of Jesus, kill me, kill me. In Jesus' name we pray. Say any attack because of this prayer backfire seven times. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. You have brought us this far. What you have given to us today shall go with us. Amen. Shall not be stolen from us. Amen. It shall prosper us. Amen. It shall promote us. Amen. It shall establish us. Amen. Even in this land. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Before I translate you, into the party for Jesus. Let me remind you that this coming weekend is night vigil. Please don't miss the night vigil of the seventh month by name July. Night vigil this coming Friday. Don't miss it. And the Lord will bless you as you do so. Shall we share the grace in fellowship?